threw out another balloon that uh, all main teachers should have a master's degree. And there's an editorial this evening in that. So primarily the big discussion at the Superintendent's Conference was the exactly what we've been doing, trying to link the school day and the school year and what to do with that extended period of time. Excuse me, what, how did the uh, principals react to the Lincoln school year? I know there was a lot of discussion. Did, did there seem to be a consensus, or was it just left open-ended? Very interesting. The superintendents uh, wanted to know the very same thing we've been wrestling with. How are we going to use it? And then uh, one of their positions is, uh, could we better use the time by putting all of the conferences go to at the beginning of the year so the teachers wouldn't have to leave when they got substitutes. And uh, I was very surprised that it wasn't endorsed with the kind of enthusiasm I thought it should be. Uh, however, the superintendents are not against it. They just want to know how to utilize it really better. Uh, but uh, I suspect that during the year we're going to be working on a number of ways to uh, better utilize the student time. And the thing that uh, the Teachers Association platform appears to be developing, that all of the non-professional duties be done by somebody else, and teachers would teach. So I suspect that any way you cut it, it's going to cost money. However, one of the things that impressed me, the governor said that the state would pay for this extended time, and that represents millions of dollars. Is he, is he talking about initially, or is he talking about ongoing? Well, he was, it sounded like ongoing. However, uh, you know, I'm not sure they can pick up 22 million a year. But he, How many days does he go to a few years? Well, he's in Greenland by there, as I understand. He wants five additional days a year for three years. Two. So that'd be 190, eventually. And uh, one... One would be uh, the February or March vacation. And while I would, you know, I don't, I would think that the governor would have to think politically. And if you talk about the February vacation, you've got all the skiers. And if you talk about the April vacation, you have all the families. So politically, it was a very courageous thing to announce. So, I'm hoping that we can help him do that. One of the things I'm pleased with, and may not be a little later, is uh, this year uh, we're not looking for a large number of staff members. As a matter of fact, I think at this point in time we need one teacher, and we're interviewing at the present time, and one assistant. So uh, I'm pleased to say that at this point in time we're in very excellent shape. Uh, we promise to give you an update on the 4th through 7th grade class sizes, and those are attached tonight, and they're falling in the area that we suspected. Uh, however, uh, the 4th grade is 21 to 24, and the 8th grade uh, is 24, 23, 24, 24, 24. I, uh, I'm not too concerned if they stay around this level. And then if they were to change, I'm not sure that we have room to do a great deal. But however, I can keep you posted with a current kind of uh, memo from time to time on enrollments as we see things through the summer. Uh, it, while we're on that subject, Darrell, uh, I think in the past, uh, the school board has had at least informal guidelines as to class size and when we should be uh, talking about extra teachers. It is not, uh, it's, it's not a policy that doesn't vary. I mean, uh, it's something that the school board has expressed an opinion about, class size. And we have a virtually new school board here, and I think that uh, maybe if we take two or three minutes at least, or maybe five minutes, or ten if you wish, whatever the school board wishes, this may be an opportunity for you to express views, if you have any, on whether you think class sizes make a difference and whether you as school board members uh, want to be 
you know, on top of it, the extent to which you want to be on top of it. Do you remember, Daryl, what uh, what it was in the, the past? Policy. Maybe Betty does. The policy? Yeah. I think... Uh, 22, I thought... Barbara, Barbara can help me. Elementary, 1520. Kindergarten, 1518. Uh, first grade, uh, 20 was the max maximum. 20 was the first. Yeah, that's uh, 1 through 3. And then I'm 21 to 2 and 3. 21 to 2 and 3. And after 3, it was... 22, 22, I believe. And then the maximum was 25, 4 through 8, as I recall. So I think at this point, we're within our policy all the way. Wait, are, you, are you in fourth grade? Fourth grade is you're going to 24, aren't you? No, maximum is 25. 20 to 25. Okay, yeah. Now, uh, I have received a call on this issue, and I told the, a person that she might want to consider coming here tonight to discuss it uh, since the citizen is unable to be here she told me that she might not be able to get a babysitter she's unable to be here I think that we ought to at least express a view her concern was that 24 was too much uh, too, too many students in fourth grade classes and that she would prefer that we take a look at that and see whether we want to add a teacher and um, and reduce the numbers uh, we're going to have some pretty good numbers in other classes as well. One of the things that I think we've got to be concerned about is how that relates to the numbers we have in other classes. And secondly, uh, space problems. And maybe uh, others have some comments on that as well. If we were to add another section of fourth grade, a sixth section with the 115 students that we have right now, that would make class sizes of 19 and I think that's too small a class size for our school district to be um, able, you know, to, to serve the, the students. I, I would think after it goes over 25, I, you know, then, then that becomes uh, a 20, 21 class size, and that seems more reasonable. But I think 19 in any uh, middle elementary class is, is too small. Any other comments on that? I have a question. There's one class of the 21. Um, is that in case others come in, they would be put in that class to raise them to the 23 and 24 in the other classes? Well, I suspect. Well, there may be a reason why they're 21. I don't know what the reason is 21. However, you know, generally the principal is going to look at the enrollments in every class. And I suspect that as children come in, that's where they go. Another thing, there are always a large number, I don't know how significant this is, but every year we open school feeling we're going to have a number of children that aren't here. The parents don't tell us they're leaving or they leave very late. So uh, this is just to the best of our knowledge at this point, is it not? Is, is there a plan that if we were to get new students in, Chris, that we would look at adding a class or another teacher or adjusting what we have now. Is there a contingency plan? Yes, but we always do, and I watch this very carefully. The problem with the middle school is that we don't have any room, and we're just hopeful. We have a contingency plan, I'm not sure where we can put them. And we may have to, you know, use, utilize space we wouldn't like to use. I'm very hopeful that we can stay around this side for at least one year. And then, uh, in a year from now, if it grew by one class, I think we might have to consider putting one of the fourth grades back to the elementary school, depending what happens to Barbara's enrollment, which was up 50 this year. See, uh, that space is supposed to be our buffer for a period of time until we make a decision as to what we're going to do. Now, uh, we may lose uh, you know, that amount of space very quickly. We have to see. Here. Now, the comment I have is really a question. Uh, I'm comfortable with 25 as a maximum uh, class size, but this year the fourth grade, and uh, we are going to heterogeneous grouping, and a lot of these classes approach the maximum. Does that put uh, a special demand on the teacher? The teacher's going to have to be teaching to uh, students that are different levels, uh, different motivations, because the grouping is heterogeneous. I 
think uh, as we group heterogeneously, our teachers are going to have to better individualize. And uh, the larger the span, the more difficult it's going to be. But uh, it's my personal feeling that the quality of our teaching staff is such that they can handle numbers up to that, that number. However, beyond that, uh, you know, I'm sure we're going to have to you know, decide what else can we do. One other question, just a small one. I noticed here it's a seventh grade and here it's eight. Uh, are these, in fact, the figures for seventh or the eighth grade? That's the seventh grade. That's the tight one. The eighth is 119, seventh 115. What is the seventh grade? Oh, oh I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. The eighth grade is a typo. It's seven. <coughs> seven. Sorry. That's not as bad as a typo where I've identified as Leslie Peters. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get to that later. <laughs> that, uh, you may want to assume that name for purposes of uh, your appearance. First of all, you'll be appearing on television at least one month a year, and Leslie Peters has uh, Leslie Peter has a Hollywood ring to it. <laughs> yeah, you may want to use that. Before we move on, when, I'd like to serve on the uh, committee for the new teacher. You, you are interviewing for an elementary teacher. Is that correct? Right. Yeah. So I, I wanted. Seventh grade. Yeah. Uh, Chris, we're uh, Friday. We're interviewing on Friday. Yes. Okay. Uh, Friday, Saturday, 8 hey, you are already. You know where you'll be at 8 on Friday. Jan? Um, I would like to say that I hope that in this next year, that with curriculum work being done and so forth, that the fourth grade be used as an elementary grade. As I understand it, when the fourth grade was moved there, it was with the understanding that they were real really still part of Pond Code. They were just housed in a different place. And I don't think that's happened. And it would seem to me that um, the fourth grade teachers ought to be working perhaps with the Pond Code teachers. And, and we should be looking at that grouping as opposed to still be thinking of fourth as a middle school grade. Uh, I'm inclined to agree. I talked to Barbara about this. I talked to the Stephen prior to his leaving, and Chris as well. And I think we all feel the same way. I think what happened is when the fourth grade was put in the middle school, the day-to-day -day activities are such that the fourth grade has to comply with the rest of the school, the teachers' meetings, uh, the various things they do. I'm going to meet with the teachers early in the year and with Barbara about putting organizationally the fourth grade into the elementary school period and then uh, making the adjustments for the kinds of things that they have to, to do with lunches and a host of things. And I think what's happened since they've been there is they, they've identified with the problem for the school, you know, whether it's lunch or when they have meetings and a host of things. So, uh, you know, certainly I think we all feel that's an elementary grade, certainly, that we ought to be part of that whole, particularly the new pilot projects that we're very excited about. You know, the, 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 what we call the restructured leadership of that elementary school. And I'd like the fourth grade teachers to be part of that. Any other comments from the board on th this part of the superintendent's report? I if not, uh, I'd like to know if there are any comments from people sitting in the audience on this part of the superintendent's report. Barbara? Barbara, could I ask you, could you go to the microphone so that the people at home can hear your question? Just, just a brief this clarifier. This is Barbara Powers. <laughs> Thank you. Um, the third grade to fourth grade placements already include several out of district transfers. So I wouldn't anticipate the numbers going down a lot from children moving, just as a caution. I would anticipate more likely that it will go up. And, and you won't have that diminished. What do you mean out of district? Uh, kids moving have already oh, alerted moving. us. You, know, you don't mean uh, people, with the moratorium is still in effect with respect to the elementary school, is it not? And 
Yeah. All right. Simply, simply that we already knew about five or six children who were whose families were relocating, okay. and that's already considered within these numbers. That's all I wanted to okay. let you know. Great. Jan. Do we have a particular point in time at which we say, um, for example, you know, we are going to now look at at hiring another fourth grade teacher? I mean, I just hate to see it go to the end of August or and then scramble to try and, and make the adjustments. Um, so, uh, is, is there some way we can? The uh, the moment I see the population going beyond their policy. I will uh, communicate with the board. Uh, we've allowed for that in the budget, and uh, we, we can do it very simply now. We aren't going to do it in September, unless something that you know, we don't see. But we'll watch this very carefully, and uh, I can call the chairman. The minute we see a large number, and uh, we're, we're interviewing enough people so that we could hire a teacher in the on almost any level. All Except right. Chemistry. In, uh, <laughs> any other comments from uh, the audience on this subject? If not, uh, Superintendent, I believe you have some more items on your report. Yes, uh, faculty resignation. You have it in your packet. Uh, sorry to lose Tracy Paul from going back to Porno. And uh, I need a motion to that, Mr. Chairman. We have a uh, motion to accept the uh, resignation of Tracy Paul. I move to accept the resignation of Tracy Paul. Is it seconded? Seconded, moved and seconded. All in favor signify by raising your hand. All opposed? It's unanimous. Does that complete your report, Mr. That Superintendent? My report. The next item uh, is a, approval of the minutes uh, of the regular meeting held on June 20th, 1988. You've all had the minutes before you and uh, you reviewed them. Are uh, there, uh, before we have a motion, any uh, proposed uh, additions, uh, deletions, or modifications to those minutes? I have one. Uh, I believe I suggested with respect to goals and objectives at that meeting that, uh, I think it's a typo, that there be an introspective, introspective look at, uh, I think it's a typo in there. We got that one, Betty? I'm, I am. Yeah, all right. Uh, any others, any, any other uh, additions, modifications, and deletions with respect to the June 20th meeting? If not, I'll entertain a motion to accept the uh, minutes with the modifications. So moved. Se moved and seconded. All in favor, signify five by raising their hand. All opposed, it's a vote unanimous. Next, the uh, approval of the minutes of the organizational meeting held on July 1, 1988. Mr. Leslie, do you have any modifications to propose? Uh, I just like the order of my name and further than the astronaut of the <laughs> So you're, you're going to give up this I notion am. of having well, a new I, new name? I, I've thought about it for the last couple of minutes. It's too complicated to change. Uh, any other uh, changes? <clears throat> if not, uh, we have a motion to approve those minutes with the change in Mr. Leslie's name. So moved. There's a second. All in favor signify by raising your hand. All opposed, that is unanimous. Uh, now, before we go to the uh, business manager's report, I see that Mr. Moore is here to discuss the uh, girls' soccer team trip to Nova Scotia. And since it's a warm night, I'm going to give him. He probably has other things he'd like to do. Mr. Superintendent, if it's all right with you and with members of the board, I'd like to accommodate Mr. Moore by uh, taking up his scheduled item out of order so that he can... Uh, leave and go home and work in the yard. Thank you, Mr. Pages. Uh, for those of you who are new to the board, my name is Roland Moore and I'm the girls' soccer coach. I think you have a, a letter in front of you. Thank you, Betty. Uh, I, there's not a lot I can tell you. We've been doing it. We started in 80, 81. It was our first year. I skipped a few years. And um, we've had, uh, we're looking for a trip that was very inexpensive. Um, promoted the team concept, some soccer, and some touring. And Canada offers that, especially with the dollar exchanges we have. Um, I don't know if there's any, it'd probably be easy if you ask me questions. We've gone through this, I think last year, Harold, you were there, but if there's any questions you have, I'd be glad to answer them. You understand that they take the school bus, and Mr. Moore, who is a very good driver, is at the wheel. Yeah. 
and uh, they go up and you play. How many games do you play up there? We're, we play in a tournament when teams are, are, are coming in all over from all over the United States and Canada. There's a team from California that comes in. It's a girls' tournament. We play in the senior division, A League, and we scored our first goal last year. Um, but the games are very close. It's like two to nothing, three to one. Um, it's an excellent, excellent opportunity for our girls to see some very, very fine soccer and also to meet a lot of friends. And some of our girls have kept contact over the years. What the board has done, the school has done, which is just tremendous, is I do have a bus driver's license. And <clears throat> I have t been allowed to take the school bus. And Hank Poles, Mr. Poles of the Scotia Prince, has given us a very, very healthy rate on the boat for the girls and for the bus. And we do have parents going this year, too, quite a number. And um, we take the bus up on the, on the Prince with the girls. And then I drive the bus, bus to Dartmouth. Halifax area. Um, this year, our girls aren't staying with um, the other team, because last year, it wasn't the only reason, but last year we ended up having to play them. Uh, and uh, it was a good, it was an excellent game, but our girls this year decided they'd like to all stay together um, in a hotel, and the rooms are unbelievably cheap in, in Canada. <coughs> Not bad rooms, either. And uh, this year, we're going to stay together as a team. We play a minimum of three games a maximum of five if we are lucky enough to make it to the finals. This is high school age? Or? This is high school age. What we've done in the past is, because we have so many girls that want to go, is uh, we've, we used to do it by seniority. The seniors would go. And we still do pretty much because it's basically my varsity players that go. It's pretty much it's the older girls. Um, I do have a freshman going this year who was a backup goalkeeper. And because I didn't want her to be the only freshman, I let her invite another very good player who was a freshman. So we do have two freshman girls going. We're taking 20 girls. We have uh, three, three couples. Three, uh, we have three parents going. Uh, Mr. Braun, my assistant, and his wife and family, and myself and my family. So we have lots of people going. It's a great opportunity for the kids. Any uh, other questions of uh, Mr. Moore and his uh, internationally renowned soccer team. Does this, uh, this require any action? Uh, no, I think if you want to move it to be allowed, we have precedent for it. Well, we do have uh, uh, precedent, but since we don't want to rely on precedent around here, may I have a motion to uh, that, uh, we, that, that the uh, trip be permitted uh, by the school board. We're fully insured, and uh, you've looked into that, Mr. Superintendent, no problem? Okay. It has been moved and uh, uh, seconded that uh, Mr. Braun be permitted to continue. So what now? I mean, Mr. Braun. Mr. Moore be committed to, uh, and Mr. Braun. <laughs> and Mr. Braun, too. Uh, be permitted to, uh, to uh, continue. This. All in favor, please signify by raising your hand. All opposed, it's unanimous. Rolly, and you may now. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming. Yeah. Okay, uh, back to the uh, order of the uh, presented by the uh, agenda, uh, the business manager's report. Do you have something of... Uh, this is that time of the year, Mr. Chairman, where we don't have a report. Uh, and winding the end of the school year, the report will be... Like this is the worst time for the controller that she probably was realized. Uh, All right. Hopefully, our, I want to just say one thing. Hopefully, in another year, uh, the memory of our computer will have far more capability because uh, we've grown to quite an extent here, particularly with the controller doing the town and the school. We'll have a report in September for you or at the next earliest meeting. All right. Anything you want to say? No, just that we're doing a lot of state reports at the time, and, you know, we're meeting deadlines, and the next board meeting will have a full financial report and other things. All right. Fine. Yeah, uh, unless the board uh, objects, I suggest that we pass by the business manager's report. And we go on now, uh, Daryl, to the next uh, uh, three items on the uh, agenda, items four, five, and six, which are or all consideration of your nomination of various people to teaching provision, uh, positions in the school district. And I, I, in order just to expedite it, and uh, uh, why don't you take up all three in succession? Well, 
nomination to have him in the Army, half-time school health nurse. Uh, David Shields, full-time physical education teacher, Bon Cole, who was with us all year since so David Sam. Uh, Marsha Foote, half-time first and second grade teacher, Bon Cole. Uh, you have the Vitas in your package, and I want to say that I'm very pleased with the quality of these people. Motion is needed. Has, has everybody had an opportunity to uh, review these resumes? And are there any questions that any of you have, uh, e e either of a specific nature or general nature, about why we're hiring these people? Does everybody understand? I have a question about the half-time status. I wonder if that means that how many half-time teachers there are. Okay. On the elementary level, Barbara, can you help us on how many half-time teachers will we have next year in the elementary level? Um, this particular position is is the um, teacher who fills in for the two lead teachers who assist me. Um, they are out of their classrooms two to three afternoons a week, and this was the position Ren Wilkinson had held for us last year. So this person is simply hired to team teach with Becky Swift and Linda Nappy in those afternoons. Um, I think the only other half-time position we have next year is the uh, is a half-time kindergarten, so that we have seven sections being offered, three full-time and one half. K-3, okay. I also have a K-3 gift. Comp that will be hiring, yes, that's right. Uh, that's on the elementary, could I explain? Oh, I'm sorry, there is a special ed, there are special ed people that are not full-time, including speech therapists and, uh, and a tutorial learning disabilities teacher. On the high school level, they have a number of fractional teachers, and that occurs when if we had uh, seven periods of Franks to cover, and we had one teacher handles five, then we need what we call a two-fifths teacher. And generally, we'll have a one-fifth teacher, two-fifths teacher, three-fifths teacher. And we've been very lucky because we have people that don't mind teaching two-fifths or three-fifths or one -fifth in the community. So uh, we try to keep that to a minimum, but uh, if the hours fall that way, we don't have any choice. Thank you. All right. Uh, you are all familiar with the resumes of these three people. You've heard the superintendent's report on why uh, he's recommending they be hired. Uh, can I have a motion that uh, uh, we... Uh, we approve the superintendent's nomination for hiring Madeline Garmy, David Shields, and Marsha Foote. Seconded. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor of hiring these three people, signify by raising your hand. All opposed. It's unanimous. We've already taken up item seven, which is approval of the trip to Nova Scotia. And I think we're now uh, ready, Mr. Superintendent, for uh, the so-called meet of this evening's meeting, which is a discussion of the goals and objectives and strategies of the Cape Elizabeth School Department for the ensuing school year. I had asked uh, that all of you be provided with a copy of the goals and objectives as adopted by the two prior school boards, the two prior years, for two reasons. Uh, one, uh, this is a, essentially a new school board. There's only one person here who's voted on any of these goals and objectives and, and told the superintendent his or her views with respect to them. And that's me, and the rest of you have not, and you ought to have an opportunity to express your views. Uh, I think that's important. And secondly, the other side of the coin, uh, I wanted you to be aware of the goals and objectives because it's difficult, uh, while all of you will be together for a while, uh, it is difficult for the superintendent to have new school boards come in each year and uh, change the, the, the course of the school department. So there's, a, there's two reasons for giving you that information. But I think it would be uh, 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 in order, Mr. Superintendent, for you and me uh, to hear from any one or more of the school board members with respect to the existing goal, the goals and objectives for last year, how we did. You heard the reports in June as to uh, how they think they did. Uh, I might just add one thing so that the uh, new board members would get some feeling for it. This is basically an accountability system. 
and uh, while the board and the superintendent uh, come up with goals and objectives and uh, are measured at the end of the year on the basis of those, the superintendent does the same thing with the administrator. So the administrators prior to September sit down with the superintendent with their unique goals and objectives for their units. And in February, we review those to see if they're meaningful or did we budget enough for what the constraints are. And when I write in August next year, their evaluations, it's based on those goals and objectives. So uh, it's an accountability system all the way that uh, hopefully we're able to measure the progress of the institution. And so far, it's, I think it's worth uh, it's worth doing. I think if there is one drawback, and I'm going to express it this year, is we've been too courageous in the past. I think we've tried to too many goals. And I would hope this year we could limit those and really get to work on them because some of the goals, uh, strategies I see are going to require a great deal of work. And understand that these are his the goals and objectives, but uh, the superintendent is looking for our input because the superintendent and the board can't be on uh, two different tracks here. We're going to have problems. And the, what has happened in the past is that we have freely discussed these with the superintendent and told him where we were in sync with him and where we might be out of sync. Let me ask you a question. I, I see the first goal from two years ago was to develop the school improvement plan. I thought that, well, I, no, I was on the committee. I, I wanted to just, that, was that not an ongoing committee? Yes. And what it, happened last year? Well, this is what happened. That was started prior to the year I came. And a number of teachers listed all of the school improvement plans to meet the requirement of the state. That was computerized. And uh, the first year I was here, I added the board goals and objectives and the administrator's objectives to them. That also went with the computer. Each year, they send back all of these goals, and there were numerous, uh, very, there were, some of the goals were really objectives. They were minutia, like, you know, that you were going to uh, make another classroom, or you were going to hire another teacher. They aren't the kinds of broad goals that we've expressed. We send the progress report that goes back to the computer each year. Now, quite honestly, it's been my feeling, while that's very important for the state, it represents pattern as far as I'm concerned, in terms of what they want versus what we're doing. I think our accountability system here is uh, far more sophisticated than there. So we have not pulled that committee together. And each year, uh, I've had someone and myself uh, give a progress report on each of those, and there are about 100. And we send them in, and we get a letter saying, thank you very much, uh, you've uh, met the requirements. <coughs> now, uh, I'm sorry to express the bias publicly. No, I However, it's the best place to do it. Well. <laughs> <laughs> and, there are very few people in the, here in the audience, so you probably will not be physically assaulted. <laughs> uh, any other comments? Yes, I have other yeah. comments. Uh, 1987, number three, conduct a K-12 analysis of this system's testing program. How, how far did we get on that? Well, that's, uh, We've had a committee that's worked all year, got a board member, representative on that, and uh, uh, Lyle Kramer chairs it, and uh, one of the things we've asked them to do is to uh, not stop, but to delay their progress until the curriculum director can get on the committee, take one more year for a very comprehensive look at our whole testing program. Viewing buying the assessment the state's doing versus what we've been doing. For example, I spoke with the director of curriculum today about this, and he's going to join the summer testing program group. And we discussed the probability of giving the private school eighth grade exam to see how our students would stack up. 
as a part, who's going to present that to your committee at your next meeting? The SSAT, is that what you're talking about? No, it's, the, it's, a, it's a special test. It's called the 8th grade private school exam. Okay. It's for all the children who go to private school. It's one we've never taken. The public schools don't generally do that. Uh, I think it, it might help us get a good picture of uh, where we are. You know, we've measured ourselves against the state. We know our SATs. We know national norms. One thing we don't know is how we'd stack up against uh, Choke, Rosemary, St. Paul, St. Andrews, and a host of others. And one way to do that for our own members would be to give that exam in the eighth grade level. And uh, the, te the testing group would hold the study. Uh, and that would happen this year? Would happen during the year. Yeah. Now, I'm not sure they're going to buy the recommendation, but that's we're going to, they're going to discuss it. Who, who isn't going to buy the recommendation? The committee, the testing committee. But what if the school board bought it? Suppose a majority of the school board wanted you to do that. That's, this is where I could have my problems with committees. Well, remember, all these committees are advisory. Yeah, I understand that, but I, I just want us to get over the thing. We, we want people to participate uh, and to, to provide their assistance and advice and so forth, but ultimately, on an issue like that, we've got to get over the thinking that it stops at the committee and that's the end of it, because the majority of the school board might think that that's a very good idea you just discussed. Sure. And if uh, the committee didn't think so, we listened to that recommendation. Well, I say so. yep. And that also goes for the superintendent has a lot of input on these committees. Mm. You know, if I thought it was a good idea, I could make sure I got to the meeting and say, "Why don't you think it's a good idea?" However, I'm not. Uh, I'm certain it's a it's a very sharp committee, mm -hmm. and I expect a good report. And to answer the question, that should be rolling one more year. That's very similar to the Foreign Language Committee. It took two years to give us a recommendation. The implementation started up in the second year. Uh, can I, uh, uh, any other questions about the, pri the prior year's goals and objectives? Loretta, why don't you finish more, here? Once, no, no, that's N fine. We're going to have a thorough discussion. Number four, assess the impact K-12 leveling and developmental placements. Where, where are no. we there? Well, there, I've had... This is really secondary. This is uh, secondary and middle school. And I've had uh, reports from two of the principals on that. And uh, primarily, the reports were around the uh, large number of questions that a person was pigeonholed for the track. Mm -hmm. He was there forever. And the reports were finished very late in May. And I have them and can share them with the board. If that's not true, a large number of youngsters, both on the, more so on the secondary level, but even on the middle school level, youngsters have been moved up and down. And I have those figures. Now that was the, that's what motivated that report. I think you remember the number of questions. Uh, but but, but, but Daryl, that's what motivated was concern on the part of the school board and yourself about these issues that have been raised. Many school board members had raised issues about leveling. I think, well, I, 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 I think, uh, I don't know what, where Loretta's going with her questions, but uh, frankly, leveling is an issue on both sides. I mean, there are people that say, hey, let's not get away from leveling, and there are a few people that say, I'm concerned about leveling. I think that, um, that it would be good to have a portion of a workshop session, even a portion of a school board session, whatever the, whatever the desire of the school board is, either way, but, you know, a half hour or 45 minutes devoted to this very important issue, which I think most of the people that go out and campaign for school board hear about it on one side or the other. Both. Both, exactly. So. I don't know what your pleasure is on that. Yeah, I think it, I, I was interested in where we were now because I think we need to go further. I mean, well, it was, I, I knew so little that I, I, I didn't know what the status yeah. was at all. Well, I think, first, we wanted some data, and I have finally got that. And I think, I want to share it with the, the new principal, actually, and I think we should share it with the board. And that's going to give us high school is five years, and middle school is only two years. But at least it gives you a feeling for 
you'll be able to answer the questions now. You know, when parents say, you know, if you pigeonhole the youngster in the fourth grade, that's where he's going to be. Well, Daryl, can we put this on the agenda for the next school board meeting? Will, will, will we have uh, time to devote enough time to this? I'd, I'd rather in the, the second one. All right. So that the principals can get involved in where we are. It's a new principal. Is that all right? No, that sounds, it's a question that I know. I'm sure Peter heard when we all campaigned. It was a question that came up a lot. So I think we get that with an open board meeting as opposed to just a workshop session. Definitely. Okay, so we're all set that the probably the October the October meeting we'll have an agenda item where you'll give us this report, and we'll be able to uh, to discuss it. Okay. Uh, look, it, uh, Jan. I don't have questions about this. You're going to w wait till we get to the substance of this year's goals and objectives. John. No, I'm fine. And Peter. All right, Daryl, why don't we just go then to your presentation of the goals and objectives for the coming year, and uh, I make a suggestion that there's one in the middle that's uh, D that says, uh, you know, a uh, new school board and a new administrative team, we, we, we need to uh, interrelate between the administration and the school board. Why don't we leave that to the end? Okay. Since that's less substantive and more procedural, right. and to uh, do uh, A, B, C, E, F, G. These are not necessarily uh, prioritized. In the uh, however, they're they're important from my point of view. I think these are topics or issues that we will have to deal with. The first one, now that we have a curriculum director, is I would hope that we develop a curriculum model in which we and I say we with the board particularly, from time to time, would realize that areas of the curriculum are sequential, germane, and up to our kind of standards. Uh, now that's the same kind of accountability system that we had developed here before. Uh, I spent some time this morning looking at one that uh, I helped develop with the director. And, uh, it's a model that uh, takes all the characteristics of an innovative school system and what the curriculum activity and participation and initiatives look like versus one in a traditional school system. And I think the first year, hopefully, Michael can develop some kind of a model to present it to us so that we all understand how we're going to measure the curriculum. I think we all agree the ex board anyway, and I would hope uh, we budgeted along these lines. That math and science would be the two areas that we concentrate on next year. As you know, we have a consultant coming in for nine weeks in math. There's a meeting Thursday with that consultant and a committee of teachers and administrators. Uh, there are, we've also hired the science consultant for the middle school for next year. Barbara, high priority on the elementary school with the science kids. We doubled that budget so the teachers would have enough of the kids. So those are the two areas we hope to be very enthusiastic about. And periodically report to what we're doing there, what we hope to do. Now, that's one area that I think is extremely important. And then from there, we, based on some kind of system analysis, the board and the administration collectively could determine what we would do the following. The next one is something we've worked well, hard uh, no, on. Hold, hold on, Darryl. Maybe, I, I don't know how the board wants to do this. He's finished a discrete area okay. here, which is curriculum management, and whether you want to have discussion about each of these as a discrete area or have him go all the way through and then go back and start all over again. I, I, I think it's more efficient to do it while he's on the subject. I agree. Well, okay. let's talk a little bit then about... Uh, Yes, Peter, do you have any comments? I have uh, a question as to why math and science are the target areas. Uh, as I recall, and I looked up very quickly while you were speaking, in that fourth grade test results that were handed out, the writing was an area where, for the first time, people have been developed at 295. Um, so, I can not really help you reconcile those. Well, let me see if I can help you with that. Four years ago, board said writing was very important. And uh, 
allocated a large sum of money for in-service training for teachers. Almost all of our teachers have taken writing courses. And the writing overall, forgetting the fourth grade scores that you looked at, the writing overall has improved tremendously. The machinery is already in place. There is a person on the elementary level who administers the writing. There's one who's leaving us for a sabbatical, as you know, who is handling it on the middle school level. There's someone on the secondary level that's doing it. So that machinery is already in progress and ongoing. So a lot of energy is going into writing, and a great deal of energy is going into writing in the last four years. Almost every teacher we hire First thing we say, if you have the Bay Writing Project course, and most of them have. If they haven't, we give it every year here, connected to the university, and our teachers take it. It's always compulsory. So there we feel we're doing a pretty good job. The only area where we fell down is the one you saw. If you look at all the others, we're right at the top. Now, the reason... Uh, uh, is that true if you were to look at the uh, seventh grade uh, tests and 11th grade tests at Cape Elizabeth right at the top in writing? Yes. SRAs? No, the, I'm saying the writing test of the assessment, no, not the SRAs, the state assessment writing is we've, been, we've done very well at every level with the exception of the latest one we report. Now I might add, two of the biggest guns on the writing assessment program in the state happen to be our teachers. As a matter of fact, much of that design is in the hands of our teachers. So we've been on top of that for five years. Well, okay. I think Peter's question is a good one, though, and it's, a, and it's appropriately raised at this time. When you're talking about curriculum goals and objectives, when we sat here, and Peter was here the night we had to report on fourth grade, and, and uh, Everybody agreed that you hadn't, you haven't had time to really analyze this and decide why it happened, or try to decide why it happened. But I think it, it was of great concern to a lot of people, and uh, particularly given the effort that we've been making in writing, why do we finish so low? Now there were a lot of possible explanations offered. Some of them, frankly, didn't hold up. Do you agree with that, Peter? Uh, well, well, let me say, you bring, I'm not asking you to agree with that. Do you still have a concern? Let me put it that way. I have a concern. I can't say it's an informed concern. I'm really in the process of asking questions, so I don't know. All right. Well, we, we have a concern, and we're taking a hard look at the full grade level. However, as you look at three, six, nine schools over a two year period of time, writing the public is one of the best. Uh, for most of the students. Now, let me try to answer why we selected metal. Well, our feeling is we looked at the math scores, and the board, the boards have were very close to this because I think since I've been here anyway, uh, we've been very concerned, and I want to put this very fairly and squarely, with the small number of youngsters who end up in the highest math possible courses. It's my feeling we should be doubling the number of kids with our IQ input that we think we know on the calculus level. And it's my personal feeling that the reason for that is that they're missing the prerequisites which start around the fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh grade. We felt that we saw some holes in the se sequence of mathematics, uh, e.g. I was in the Chinese class in the fourth grade when they were teaching algebra. And the Japanese teacher as long as we can get it. So I think it was our feeling that we better get to work on the math program so that a larger number of our youngsters would leave with far more math than they presently leave with. That's the math. I'm not certain that we have the kind of data for science that we have for math. I think it's more empirical, and uh, I, I think uh, those of who have been around the law just feel that our science program ought to be stronger. Uh, you know, I can't say our testing and what have you, but we don't have that kind of data. 
But working closely with the high school principal and the other principal, Sarah Field, particularly in the elementary level, I, I have a feeling we didn't feel we had a very good program in science at all. And you know, so what can you expect on the senior level if you don't have anything down here? So you know, it's our feeling Phi Beta Kappa's are made in the early grade. So that's how science came about. Now, if I were to ask the old board and some members of the new board and the old, old, old board, what would be the next one? I think we'd all agree we ought to do something about social studies. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I suspect that next year it will be social stuff. Unless we see something else that we want to work with. Don't science and math kind of go together, especially by the high school level? You, you can't go on with the science unless you have the math background. Well, they're in the discipline. They should be. And, and more so as you get into the higher levels. So that's. But does that mean it's all we're going to do next year, or is, are, is the groundwork going to be laid for some of well, the other areas? That's the, that's the priority. That's the focus. That's, my suggestion is that's our priority. Now, when the model is developed, the, the whole base will be there for what we do. Uh, as you know, uh, just to give an example, we're starting the ninth grade, the health program. That's already in the works. That'll be implemented next year. Uh, I'm trying to think what other areas we're working on. We're working with whole language. As a matter of fact, we've got teachers working this summer. So there are a host of curricular things we're working on right now. But I think we'd like to say the high priorities are math and science. Uh, while you're on that uh, subject, incidentally, it might be well, uh, Loretta has suggested to me uh, that, that when we discussed and approved where to start the foreign language program in the elementary school, we were not on television, and there are a lot of people that watch on television. So I rather suggest that you might want to speak to that for a minute or two to the people on television to let them know what we're doing about foreign languages in right. elementary school. Right. The foreign language, the elementary level, next year will be in fourth and fifth grade. And uh, it will be 20 minutes a day, the fourth and fifth grade numbers. And uh, Exactly how we're going to work that in. I'm working with the principal of that school, and he's going to tell me exactly how he wants to do it. He's worked on that this week. And I think we ought to, can we save that, or do you want to hear where he is? Do we know how we're going to do it yet, exactly? Mr. Chairman, would like to hear how I, I do. It's what, uh, uh, uh. Loretta, what do you think? No, I don't mind waiting. I just thought yeah. that they would be interested to know yes. that fourth and fifth graders will be having yeah. foreign language if, yeah. if he's not prepared. I mean, yeah. Yeah. We can do that at the we'll do that at the next meeting. I think this was just informational for the public. We have the whole program. All right. Well, I'll probably have the teacher next week. Okay. All right. Great. Any any other uh, comments? I guess the question I have on the curriculum model: What's the time frame when it'll be developed? I mean, is it something we're going to look at? Second half of next year is it something we'll look at around Christmas time? I would uh, suspect that uh, half a year to develop the program. We're starting in various areas: ninth grade health, whole language, uh, science, and math. We'll get started in September on that, right off the bat, even before school starts. However, I'm asking Michael to sort of have some kind of a, a model to show us by the February meeting, so that we can react to it. That doesn't mean you're not going right. They're stepping right into the curriculum. The school board isn't involved in, in approving everything that you do in that uh, no, so this curriculum would be, development. This would be really detailed kinds of ways we're going to approach yeah. it. And then, but I want you to understand it so that when we evaluate what we're doing the curriculum, you see the kind of model. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jan? I, I would like to add to this particular goal that um, I would hope that along with this we look at our grading system and um, how kids, um, whether or not they are, are working just for a grade or, or how they feel, are they motivated to work, you know, for learning. And it, it seems to me like a lot of these are basically things that, that join together to form one core, one solid core, what our school system is going to be. Jane, can I suggest to you that is number C on here? Yeah, I, I saw that, that that was.
slides, but it goes also back to the testing that we were talking about earlier. They all kind of join together so that the testing reflects what the what we're trying to measure in the in the curriculum that we're developing and so forth. And that you know, at some point in the year, I'd like to hear um, how that all fits together. Well, I agree. This is all business intended, but as we attack it, you know, we, we have to cut it down so that we can attack the pieces mm -hmm. and then put them together. Right. But uh, you mentioned this. This is one that Harold mentioned last year. Uh, I have. Uh, I'll tell you one of the strategies that I hope to get at on this, and the letters written. I'd like to invite 20, and this is not a committee. We have enough committees. Yeah, we do. Uh, this is a group of people for tea. Maybe. I'm going to explain. I'm going to ask, and I've selected the people, 20 very bright people on staff. And uh, I tried to spell out, and I use sizes for uh, what I think the problem is, but to identify. How best they think we could attack it. I'd like to start that for two reasons. First, the issue is extremely important. And secondly, I'd like to, to start uh, think tanks around particular problems and then dissolve the tank after they solve the problem. Hey, can, can I suggest so that we can go in order here? Because you are talking about C now, aren't you? Yeah. So w why don't we complete B and then go to C and do it in order here, and I think it will be more efficient. Why don't you go on to B, Daryl? Uh, B, uh, we uh, did all of the groundwork for B. Now that we have the New England School Development Report, and what alternative solutions we can take in terms of how we're going to put containers around uh, our philosophical organization. Well, for the television audience, we're talking about building and space and what to do about it, right? Right. Okay. Okay, I'll try to keep this into simple language here. First of all, the New England School Development, probably should explain that since we're on television, is a consultant firm that uh, spent six months here in the community, came up with a very excellent report as to the alternative ways we could go uh, in terms of building. As you know, uh, the relief that we're getting is because of the portables at the elementary school at the present time. Now, I, in my experience, I've seen several strategies that boards have used to do this, and I just bring them to your attention. The strategy we use uh, hopefully will be selected by the board. Uh, one is to develop a larger community representative committee to study all the alternatives and act as an advisory building committee to the board. I've seen that work in a number of places. I've seen this also work. The administration and the board study the alternatives and make the decision and then sell the campaign to the community. And that's a large task because there are some philosophical issues here that I'm sure you all realize that are going to be very sensitive. Uh, but however the strategies are laid out, this is a very important task. And the sooner we do this, the sooner the town can uh, uh, run the school system for a period of 10 years. This will probably be one of the most costly decisions this board will make over the next few years. My personal opinion is that's why you can have building advisory committees, but the buck stops here, right. and uh, at building advisory committees, sometimes it's easy to be on one and to vote yes um, um, for whatever you say because they're not accountable. And the people that are accountable are the five people here, and it, uh, I sometimes think that, uh, that building advisory committees are not against it. Are, uh, are a way to deflect a little responsibility. I suppose we change the name from building advisory to facilities uh, uh, committee or facilities reorganization committee and, and approach it that way as opposed to looking at building advisory which immediately conjures up bricks and mortar and new buildings. Uh, I think one of the things that at least I got out of the report when I had a chance to look at it was the fact that there were a number of things that can be done within the existing facilities. And I think that's where 
we're having parental input and having this group that we could bring together for a short period of time um, might be beneficial to all of us here uh, and have some input from the community as well. For example, one of the uh, one of the recommendations was to uh, move seventh and eighth grade to the high school. Uh, that raises all sorts of concerns in some people's minds. In other people's minds, it might not be a problem. But I think if we give people a forum in which to participate and bring those things to light, it might be beneficial. So that's, that's when I looked at this, and I kind of underlined it when I got this over the weekend. Talking about the building committee advisory group immediately conjures up the fact that we're going to be putting things out to bid in a short period of time, rather than look at uh, look at the fil facilities that we already have. We know where they're underutilized. We know where they're overutilized, and developing some sort of a program to uh, to do those. To look at that first. Doesn't make sense. For example, we have a whole in the field over there where we were thinking of putting. Uh, Storage. The bond crater? <laughs> now, you know, that's really a facility problem. You know, we know we need bleachers. We know we need storage. And if it worked, then it would say, look, here are two other problems. Work that into your formula. You see, yeah. I, I, I think your suggestion is a good one, John. I think you just have to be very, very careful doing it. Because once committees make a report and say, we unanimously recommend, okay, your, your board is in a tough, tough position. But Peter, what's your view? Well, my view is uh, that we ought to have a couple of workshops first among ourselves with the principals and well, superintendent with the principals and, you, and see what we think, see what we've concluded from the NESDEC report. And then if we have a wide variety of opinions and we have a great deal of uncertainty and we want a lot more input from the community, then we appoint a Right That's right. I agree. I think we, we need right, more information you, before sure. we can start asking others. All right. Uh, Dan? I guess I'm not probably decided one way or the other, but my, my instinct is that um, in order for the community to feel like this is their own as well, that, that they ought to be part of it at some point. Well, why don't we do, what Jan's idea is one to discuss in the workshops, and I think Peter's suggestion is a, is a good one, and you can just take that back. We're, we're just listening to your goals and objectives, but that's a little food for thought for you as to, you know, consider Peter's suggestion, and if we have workshops, you can then, we can then consider Jan's suggestion. And uh, one of the nice things about this, this is a very appropriate time, because uh, we have new administrators who are not invested at all. It would be nice to have them look at the needs from their point of view, and they may bring a sort of fresh look at this. Okay, well that takes care of B. Why don't C. you go on to C, which is my favorite. C is uh, the one that's uh, most difficult. Uh, there are two <coughs> strategies that I'm thinking of suggesting, but I'd like to share with you. Now why don't, we do, do, why don't you just summarize, Daryl, in, in one minute for the television audience, what C is, that it relates back to last year and there was a concern expressed by various members of the board that uh, in most educational enterprises, there, it, it is pretty easy to focus on the best and the brightest, the ones that find school easier and uh, are self-disciplined and perform very well. And it is much harder, frankly, to get those who don't naturally perform to, in fact, perform better. And. Uh, there was great concern on the previous school board about that, and you had as a goal of a, an objective last year to, to, to begin to brainstorm this, and it isn't done in me, most school districts around the country. They don't worry about kids in the middle and how they can achieve better. And uh, if I might just, uh, since I asked you to make a speech and I'm making it, uh, it because it is a favorite topic of mine, I. Uh, I read a speech by, uh, you were talking about uh, prep schools, uh, the headmaster of the Taft School in Watertown, Connecticut, and I'm sure you're very familiar with him. And uh, He was talking about uh, uh, the, the crisis in education being one where we are educating very well a small segment of our society, but since we are entering in the informational age uh, and we're going to have fewer and fewer people uh, doing simply manual labor, that the country is at risk unless we are educating well a much higher percentage 
than we are currently, of students, than we are currently educating well. That, uh, that they just simply, pe people will not be productive because a lot of middle level jobs and lower level jobs are not going to be what they were 10 years ago. They're going to be jobs that require uh, a considerable amount of mental ability. That's one part, or one side of the court, is uh, they have to increase the skill level of a larger proportion of our students and motivate them to want to accomplish those higher level skills. Then there's another constraint or part of this whole scenario which is in the, and I want to be fair to our students, in a community such as this where the aspirational level for college is high, you find an awful lot of pseudo learning. In other words, how to beat the system. And that's uh, very often is memorizing the text or memorizing what you have to do. And you know, I think if all, we all went back to high school again, you know, you know we consider that on occasion. Because uh, the beating the system and getting into school is, is what you want. But uh, that isn't really what you want in terms of educated youngsters. Now, that's a big program. How um, we have to change the motivational level of the youngsters, their deeper appreciation for learning, share learning, you know, and not worry too much about the college learning. Hopefully that comes with it. And it, uh, it probably would mean changing our complete accountability system, testing program, or grading. You know, it's the A's of the brand new art class. It just brings a host of things. Uh, but that, uh, that's one thing we hope to attack. One thing I've been looking into is the coalition of essential schools. And we would qualify for the amounts of money we spend for uh, staff development to join Ted Sizer. He is the person, ex-dean at Harvard, Ed School, who wrote uh, Study of the High Schools and the Horace Compromise. And uh, it has much to do with the shopping mall high school and all of these things that are out there. Uh, we could join this group. And uh, they're attempting to do what I've just spoken of. How to get youngsters to learn the same word. And uh, it deals with motivation. Well, well, when you say join that, that costs money, and you would look to get a grant of some kind to do well, that. Well, it doesn't cost that much. Oh. See, if we're spending $50,000 on staff renewal, we would qualify to join. See, I have no problem with that, Daryl. I, uh, that, that's fine. I think there are other things that can be done simultaneously closer to home and very practical. I think if you, uh, uh, I was going to suggest, uh, say, I think if you went over to the high school and investigated this, uh, you'd find some interesting things. You have investigated and you know all the interesting things I'm going to tell you. One is that there are uh, a few teachers in the high school, for instance, uh, who are risky for students in terms of grades. They mark very hard. And there are many college-bound students who take those courses and get nervous about it, or their parents get nervous about it, and say, so-and-so grades very low. And may go in and argue with the teacher, in fact, do frequently afterwards, about how Johnny or Sally doesn't deserve such a low grade. And it is my impression that if you went and asked Johnny and Sally about those teachers, they'd tell you the best they have, they learn more, and yes, I got a B minus. But I learned more in that course than I've learned in any other, you hear from them. And I really enjoyed it, even though I got a B minus. And the customers will tell you that. They will, these kids are pretty candid about that. So I think during this process, one of the things you ought to do, and you know who the teachers are, Go over and talk to them and say, what motivates kids to class? And how do you reach kids in the middle? And how do you get them to be interested in what you're teaching them? And also, as part of this process this year, in this goal and objective, talk to kids. 
and ask them what they think and ask them what motivates them to perform. I, I really think that would be very, very telling. You know, no, no, no school systems ever ask the customers what they think. Well, I would hope that would come from my meeting with uh, these 20 people. One uh, in the studies indicate. But there were the 20 people now. I, I'm just asking you will, you, will you consider talking to some of the kids about this? Sure. Right. I think that that's a big part. Uh, but one of the big parts is high expectations. You know, if, uh, the studies indicate if you have high expectations, chances of getting them are pretty high. You know, I hate to use the story again, but the teacher that used the locker numbers as a mistake for the IQs of the kids <laughs> got an awful lot of the kids until she found out they were locker numbers. And this is a true story. And But uh, there are studies, study after study. If you expect an awful lot, you generally get it. That's right. Wayne, you had something? Just Why don't you, Wayne, would you go to the microphone and identify yourself? We know who you are, but there may be some watching who don't. I'm Wayne Dorr. I'm the Director of Special Services here in the CAPE system. I just wanted to <coughs> comment to your thought, Harold, about uh, talking with the kids. I have, for a long time in my career, <coughs> felt that that was a particularly important thing for school systems to do. Uh, we should also do it in mental health, talk with the customers. I had occasion this year to meet with uh, several classes to do just that, to talk with the kids about how they felt about a number of things, including uh, the quality of the education they felt that they received while they were in high school. Um, with one group, I, I discussed uh, their thoughts about the quality of education since kindergarten. Uh, we had a conversation about uh, uh, their perceptions of the school boards role in their education. And I might point out here that a number of the kids thought they ought to see you more in their classrooms so that they could carry on dialogues with you directly. Uh, what I, I guess I'm saying, Harold, is that to corroborate your point, I, from I experience here this year, uh, think that that's a very strong um, tactic to take in order to look at the issues that have been raised, and I've listened to a number of the board members raise this year about meeting the middle. I think you'd find some very uh, positive surprises about that issue. And talking with the kids and their perceptions of uh, the issues of, this is what I expect from my teachers, and uh, this is what I didn't get, and this is what I did get. And uh, I found that to be a very enlightening experience. And one which uh, I uh, intend to continue next year with a couple of the teachers that invited me in to do that. Great. Anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Appreciate that, Wayne, very much. Any other uh, uh, comments on this goal and objective, which is to increase the performance of all kids? in the school system. Peter? Is it did the grading system part of this? It may be. I'm not sure. That, apparently, and, and I'm saying this from experience, there are two things that are hard to change in any school system in the world. The grading system and the geographical district where the youngsters go to school. <laughs> and those are the most difficult things to change. And the report card is number one. Because, you know, we all know what A, B, C, D, E, F means, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And, uh, however, I think we're going to have to give some thought to making some major changes. I'd like to see some of our high school courses pass fail, like a lot of our colleges. Of course, so the colleges are getting rid of that now, too. A lot of them are getting rid of the pass fail because uh, in some institutions of higher learning, with great reputations, it's been, uh, it hasn't been very demanding to go to school there. And I think we have to worry, we have to make it demanding, and you talked about expectations. And I, 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 I'll, I'll be quiet after this, but this is something that I'm very interested in. I told you when we discussed this last year that I personally know of a student who graduated from Cape Elizabeth High School who was a poor student and who did not like 
school at all. Was not successful in school and didn't like it. And this student took an English course at Cape Elizabeth High School that was very difficult from a teacher who did not cater to this student's low expectations of himself. And it was the most unforgettable educational experience this student ever had because he told me I learned a lot and it's, I learned more in that course than I ever learned in any course and I never dreamed that I would learn that much in any course that I took in school. Got a D. So that, that's the kind of thing I'm t talking about looking into. Well, I have one comment on, on grading when it does come up. Uh, I always went to schools where C represented good solid achievement and I didn't realize how different that schools are today until a few weeks ago a son of uh, friends of mine from California came to Maine and he told me that in the California schools he went to, A was the expected mark. And anything less than an A was less than expected and was failure. And I never thought of it quite that way, that you could only go down in that grading system. There was no way to go up. That's a lot of truth. Any other comments on this item? I just hope that at some point we have a nice long discussion about this because I think the possibilities are well, what you, in, in line with that and having another discussion, and since I'm leaving the school board next year, uh, and this is, you know, six years, and we're no closer. That has no fault of yours. It's just you just came aboard late, and you just started this. But uh, I fear having this thing studied and studied and studied and it's not to suggest that we shouldn't study things but when can we have a report I'd like to see a report uh, prior to the end of the year the end the end of this calendar year on some of the things an interim report on some of the things you're thinking about and some feedback from the board to you on how we react to some of these things now I know you got a lot of things to do with your day well, but what I would like is to get a handle on this first, and I'm going to get some help to get a handle. I'd like to come back and say, these are the things we're going to do. Here's the timetable. We're going to try to follow the thing. A, B, C, D. We can react to it. Okay, but well, I think we want to react to it, you know, by the end of the, this well, county year rather than two years from now. Or, well, yeah. I would hope that we have something as soon as possible. All right, and, and so you feel it's quite important, Jan, you're, you're, this particular issue we're talking about. And Loretta, is yes. this one you're really interested in? Very much so. And John oh, sure. and Peter. Okay, so you got a school board here that got some consensus. Yeah, yeah. really interested in this one. Okay, um, uh, D is one I suggested we move to the end. That's procedural. How the school board and the new administration uh, will work together to bring all these things about. We'll leave that procedural one to the end. Now E is uh, probably the most significant innovation this school system is making. Uh, we have, uh, in line with national studies, restructured a school where a leadership team is running that school. And we're doing it, I believe, I have to check it again, with the same budget, except for the changes in budget and salaries and that, that we started out with. We're going into the second year, uh, on two occasions, the teachers were surveyed as to uh, how it's doing. That was extremely positive. And I think I should share those reports with the new members of the board. Uh, I would hope that uh, the State Department would, after this year, monitor this as one of the uh, restructuring programs that uh, the profession ought to look at. I think, to date, this has been a very successful experience. And I think the children are really benefiting from what's happening in that school. And uh, I say that because every month I'm there to watch their meetings, Tuesday at 8 o'clock, every first Tuesday. 
and I am seeing more enthusiasm on the part of the teaching staff there than I have seen anywhere. And uh, when they break down to tackle problems and to share them, they really go at it. And uh, I think the quality of that staff is superior. Uh, but I think the way they're running the school collectively, uh, they're using the new word now, teacher empowerment. That's the, that's the new word. However, whatever that means, I'm going to look it up. It means that everybody shares in the success of the goals. And that's a perfect example. And that's another thing. We should uh, first. Uh, we've written a short article on that. I think uh, we should uh, share that with the new board members uh, and share the, the minutes of what we have so that you'll be right up to date as to where we are. And I would hope Mr. Chairman and the Secretary put that in the minutes so she would compile all that and get it to the new board members. I think she just put it all in the, in, in the minutes. You remember all that, Betty? I think so. He'll tell you later on. Okay, I know where I can find it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Uh, any uh, questions on this particular item? If not, one, one, I just was having a thought about your being at that meeting. You know, I think that would be critical right there, the fact that you're interested, involved, an important part of that. And and if possible, I, I would think, you know, any time that that could happen at the other schools, your, your physical presence there, I think that is a rejuvenating... Uh, I, th I really think it helps. I think it, it. I think it. It's a compliment to them that your interest is there, and I. I expect that those kind of results might also come in uh, at the other schools with, well, whenever you're able. I, I think that's a, a real key. Any other uh, uh, comments on E? Then, if not, uh, we'll go to F. F. The chairman can speak to that. Uh, the model, one of the things I should say before, the, in this model that's been developed, in most models, the superintendent does not negotiate with the teaching staff. The business manager does the negotiating for everybody else. But the, here for the board, and it's attorney, it's attorney, subcommittee of the board negotiates with the teaching staff. Now, the superintendent works very closely with the association in a variety of ways. But doesn't take an active role in negotiation. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'm not sure what model no. the board wants, new board wants to do. I have all kinds of suggestions, of course. Yeah, well, and so do I. Uh, and I think that, uh, well, I'll tell you what my views are, and speaking before the public, uh, uh, we only have five members on this board. It's one of the smallest uh, boards I've ever heard of. And one of the advantages of having five is that uh, they get to participate in a lot of things directly that uh, they would otherwise have to delegate because uh, in other boards that are too big and unwieldy, they can't do it as a, uh, as a board. Uh, one of these is negotiations. I think it's in, I, th I think it should work this way. I don't think it should be structured so that any member of the board is excluded from the negotiating session. I think that the issues that we confront with uh, teachers and negotiations are so important and go so deeply into how the school district can function that every member of this board should, if they're available and have the time, be involved in sitting at the negotiations. The, before the negotiating sessions begin, uh, there, there should be a, an understanding among the school board members that one, they'll all be there if they wish to be, two, that the attorney and, and possibly one other or two others would do the bulk of the negotiating in terms of back and forth responding, but that it is appropriate under certain circumstances, if a school board member wants to say something, they can. But I think that uh, we, that's all things we can decide. I think, frankly, we ought to decide that when we're available, uh, we should do it. There are, uh, there are uh, uh, people on the board who, uh, who are not off at a specific job, you know, during 
certain hours, five days a week. I think John and I are the only ones who are in that position. And so uh, I think that what we would do is ask the other three members of the board who, who have some time to do some analysis and some research to take on specific tasks with respect to these negotiations and to make presentations based on their analyses of certain issues because they'll be, they'll be well informed on them. That's how I would see it going. I would see us using the attorney, uh, beginning the process, having us all there in the beginning, uh, and maybe dividing our group up into uh, you know, a couple people to become expert in this area and a couple people to become expert in another area. Is that, what, what is that? Is that what we've done in the past? Well, we did it, we did it uh, in bank uh, last time. Uh, it ended up that, that yeah, we did it three, that uh, Priscilla and Fran and I were kind of designated to do that. Uh, one of the reasons uh, was that Sharon was in Augusta every day and didn't get home till late. The, on, the, the only drawback to having all five is you can't have, you don't have a very effective negotiation if you have five people speaking to the other side. But that's something I think everybody should be in attendance if they can be, if they want to be. And how we divide up the responsibility of responding to things orally in the negotiating table, we can discuss among ourselves. You know, Mr. Chairman, this would be an opportunity. This is a very high priority and an important one. We weren't able to announce this, but you probably the people read it in the paper. Uh, the Greater Council of Governments awarded the school one of the community prizes, a thousand dollars that I haven't seen yet. <laughs> I have to get the president of the Heritage Bank. But I'm certain it's come the wrong way. The check is in the mail, I'm sure. Well good, you can pay us for negotiating. No, but, uh, we're the only except for Kennebec, or the only career ladder program in the state. We maintain that. And it's been maintained through negotiations. So I hope that, that all these remain. It's extremely important that the negotiations continue along the lines that it has for the last three years. Statistics become very important in this process, and D produces statistics. And what I would hope to do is to ask two members of our board, and whenever I say two, I, I, you can read into that that if others want to join in, uh, I encourage that, but uh, I, would, I would ask two members of the board at some point uh, at the end of summer to kind of work with D on the statistical analysis uh, that's needed when we go back and forth in negotiations. Very important. When, is, when are we supposed to start? You said very near in your packet. Uh, I was, uh, I'd say November, December. Some, yeah, some time, time uh, just before the middle of the school year. I don't know if this has been done before, but I, I would also like to hear what model the Teachers Association would be interested in using, and it seems to me... Well, I know. I can answer that. that they don't. They would prefer that you will all not be there. Well, I, I think that that might be a little unfair. I, I Oh, I didn't mean it to be unfair. I, I mean, uh, I, you asked, we were told that. I'm only, I'm not trying to be unfair, biased, or prejudiced, Jan. I can only report to you what was told to us at the negotiating table. Having reported it, I will no I will not comment any further on it for fear that I may be biased or prejudiced. I think that if if we all work together at some point on a model that we all agree upon, that that, that might uh, enhance negotiations. All right. Well, the, anything. The new theory, a couple years old. Harvard Frog for getting to yes. And what it is, it's, you don't you don't deal with adversaries, you deal with issues. And you discuss it. And I think as a teacher associations, and no I use the word associations get more uh, careful. Well 
as they increase in their professions, mm -hmm. I hope that the breed start dealing with more issues dealing with gas and what it's all about, and less the labor model, which was inherited some 14 years ago. I would be very interested in, in pursuing that particular theory in book and, and maybe seeing how it applies to our school system. you have a copy of it? I can get it. Okay. And the, the one before the end is one that's uh, extremely important here, and D is going to take full responsibility for this. Five-year plant maintenance program. Uh, hopefully, much of it will be done in the first year because you know that's part of our budget this year. But we would like to see five-year plan that we present board can present to the council each year and uh, hopefully do as well in our budget process we did as we did this year and uh, i'm sure that our ability to lay out what has to be done in some kind of uh, fashion helped significantly now i'm sure there are all kinds of other things but those are the biggies that i see mr chen okay for next year uh and the D, of course, is one that I just added it on paper because it's not, uh, it's very unique that a uh, board and an administrative team uh, be so new. So all you're suggesting with respect to uh, D, which says another high priority to the administration is that this is not only a new school board, but a new administrative team. We're going to have to spend an enormous amount of time not only getting to know one another, but settling on goals, objectives, strategies, and procedures, and reviewing already designed board policy. This we should discuss. And I think one of the things that we will end up doing is, is uh, having workshops from time to time where we'll divide them in two and take two issues at a time. We've already, uh, and, and, and sometimes, I think, moving some of those things to regular school board meetings. What I would hope, that we might uh, do this year is move along some of the regular reports more quickly than we have in the past. We have spent, uh, and this is not necessarily bad, but we spent a lot of time in the five years I've been here listening to reports. And a lot of the reports we could read. Uh, some of the reports need to be given orally because you have t people watching at home and they need to hear about it too. Others aren't so important to give orally. I would hope to be able to move the meetings along uh, fairly briskly when we get to the regular monthly reports, thereby providing more time for discussion of substantive issues. And I think those are the kinds that we're going to be discussing a lot of policies and strategies, goals and objectives, and I'd like to see more of those on, at regular school board meetings and, if necessary, in lengthy workshops. You know, uh, what do you all think of that? Oh, I have no problem with that at all. Uh, and Loretta? Yes, I agree. Okay. Okay. Jan? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You know, one way to start that, Mr. Chairman, would be uh, the next time we collectively, we, Chairman and Superintendent, do the agenda, I'd suggest we change the agenda format and we put the trivia one section. Now this evening is the first time since I've been here that the chairman has allowed three nominations that are perfunctory to be taken at one time. There isn't any reason why we have to go through every individual one. Right. Unless you have one you don't want for right. some reason. So I think we could streamline this so that the substance is the big thing. The trivia would allow us to leave a lot earlier. Exactly. Exactly. A lot of what we do is habit. We just change some of the habits. This is the time to tell the super. Or does that complete your report on goals and objectives? That does uh, complete uh, my preliminary report. All right. Now, uh, you've had feedback, Daryl, on the your individual proposals. Would ask the board. Uh, whether they have some 
goals and objectives that are fairly well defined and they can articulate in a couple of minutes that they would like to see you consider adding. Jan? I just have a, a goal for the board itself, which is that I would hope that it would get out into the community a little more. Um, I think with the election this past year, that did happen, but I would like to see specific times during the year, maybe twice during the year, when the board is invited into people's homes and we hear what the community is feeling. Because I think too much of the time we rely on them to come to us, and I think more of the time we should be or we should be going to them as well. Well, I, I think that's a very good suggestion, and could we ask you to come back to us with a proposal you could co coordinate this? All right? So we'll have Jan coordinate something and come back to us with a proposal. In conjunction with that, I would like to see the school board talk with the teachers other than in negotiations. You may have done that in the past, but of course that hasn't happened in the six months that we've been here. I, I, we had a wonderful interchange with the principals. I mean, I really felt like it, it, it was so informative. It was, it was most important. We haven't been able to do that with the teachers. And ha Is and that appropriate? Oh, yeah, I think it's appropriate, absolutely appropriate. And, um, do you mean by just encouraging school board members to go by the schools and chat with the well, teachers or that formal? I, I would think a formal, a formal meeting, a, a, you know, a, a meeting of the, you know, just a, what's on your mind, you know, how, Okay, I think that's a very good idea, and I would ask you to come up with some, and talk to some of the teachers, talk to the principals, and come up with uh, a, a proposal for a format that we can consider. Anything else before we move along here? If not, you have something you're looking at me. Well, I'm afraid if I say anything, you'll ask me to do it. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you see, but we can move briskly here and get these things uh, taken we care of. Twice. Somewhere. Yeah. Uh, anything else on on this subject matter? Uh, if not, Daryl, we thank you for the thoughtfulness that uh, that went into your your preparation of goals and objectives for the coming year. The next item on the agenda is other business. I think we discussed a lot of business so far. Uh, correct me, yes, Daryl. Do you have a report that you asked for from Nautilus? I'm sorry, I'm going to put that to bed. It's in the back. Oh, oh, all right. Yeah, here's the agreement between uh, the Nautilus Swim Club and the town of Cape Elizabeth which reflects uh, the discussions we had with, uh, with Nautilus on, and, and their presentation to us on, on how uh, responsibilities were to be divided in terms of uh, money. Is that correct, Darrell? That's right. And the only other thing, Mr. Chairman, I think you mentioned it uh, earlier at your organization, uh, a date for the next meeting, and I think the one that was suggested was September 6th. That's right. That was, uh, you all recall talking about that, September 6th? September 6th. Okay. Uh, that will be the next meeting of the, uh, of the school board on September 6th, Tuesday, September 6th. And uh, that completes, unless uh, somebody has something to add to other business, that completes our consideration of other business on the agenda. Uh, the last item tonight is consideration of a motion to go into executive session uh, for the purpose of uh, discussing negotiating and personnel matters uh, under the main right to know law. John? I was going to move that we yeah. go into executive session. I appreciate the motion. Seconded uh, by Mrs. Pond. Been moved and seconded. All in favor of going into executive session signify by raising their hand. All opposed? All right. Uh, we'll recess for five minutes and then go into executive session.
How you doing? Uh, I guess we'd better go upstairs. It's probably clear here yeah, with the TV and the mic. I think we should go upstairs. Yeah. I can do this in two seconds. Just want to make one quick point. Oh, I know, but I want to ask one question. Well, actually, we can do it down here. Then it's just, it's just real quick. That's what we'll do. We'll do it here. Turn it. 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 Turn it.